Happy St. Patty's Day, guys. Today, we're gonna add a little color to our signs. A couple weeks ago, Dad sent me a video by this guy, Build Dad Build, and he does some pretty cool stuff. So he did a video on adding color to your different wood projects. Now he just did some uh, basic samples, but me and Dad have been kind of talking about it and thinking, how can we add this to a sign? So we had to come up with a process, a lot of trial and error, and we're gonna do that today. So we found this kind of scary, almost Halloween looking leprechaun, and Dad's gonna carve it, and then I'm gonna add the color. We're using two types of food coloring. Only one of them worked. So let's get to work and see how this thing ends up. So we started off with about an 18 by 20 inch blue pine board. So this is just shiplap that we trimmed all that shiplap off and then glued it up together. And it came out to about five and three quarter inch of working surface per board. We wanted a two inch frame all the way around this thing. So dad used a little speed square which is a lot more accurate than just using a tape measure. And he made his marks and then connected them with a yardstick. For the layout on this sign, we used our inkjet transfer process. So that's really involved. There's several different steps and we did an entire video on just that. I'll leave a link in the description below because if I tried to go into all of that different information, this video would end up being an hour long. But basically we print it out on freezer paper, trim and tape it together, and then we turn it over, try to get it centered in that square, and then we rub that paper and it actually transfers it onto the board. So once you get it transferred, one thing you want to remember to do is put one or two light coats of clear over it. Otherwise, as you're carving, it could rub off. Real quick guys, we are really trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year, so if you could do me a favor, click that subscribe button and the little bell icon. We got a ton of cool stuff coming up that you don't want to miss. The first bit Dad's using is our carving liner at an eighth of an inch deep. Now I've been getting questions lately about what bit does what, so this is your detail bit. For me personally, I'm not as good as Dad is, so I would have used it on a little bit more of the artwork. but. Yeah, it's better than me, right? Let's not sugarcoat it. So he's doing the bare minimum, which is what you want to do because this bit will dull faster than your profile bit. And he's going to get all of the really, really fine detail done in this artwork with just the carving liner. It's always a good idea to do the finer stuff or the harder stuff on your carving first. That way you don't get a bunch of stuff done and then you go to the real hard stuff and you mess it up and then you're kind of screwed. The next bit dad's using is the profile bit between an eighth inch and three sixteenths. So these lines where the hat is right here are really close together. And part of the coloring process that I'm going to do on this section of the board is going to be wire brushing. So we were really concerned that if we tried to get all of these lines that when I'm wire brushing, it's just going to chip them out anyway. So dad decided to do every other one. One thing to remember about artwork is that you can kind of fudge things here and there. You can do, if you have lines that are really close together, you can do every other one, which is exactly what dad did here as well. Because unless you're the guy that drew the artwork or you're comparing it to something else, it's just kind of all going to blend together. Again, depending on how you carve it, depending on what it actually is. But there's a lot more room for error when you're doing artwork than there is when you're doing letters and numbers. When you're carving a lot and there's a lot of different lines, it's super easy to kind of get confused as you're carving. It's like that old saying, you miss the forest for the trees, right? So as you're concentrating on one line, it's really easy to kind of get wrapped up in that and forget what the entire picture is going to be. So a really good idea that dad does every time we do an inkjet transfer process is he prints out what he's supposed to be carving on a regular piece of paper. That way he has something to compare it to and maybe one of the transfer lines is crooked or maybe it didn't transfer and we missed it and we weren't, didn't go back in with a pen and fix it. It gives you a reference to go back and double check to make sure that you're carving all the lines you need to carve because 
I've done it before where I carved something I wasn't supposed to carve and man that is really frustrating and then you spend an hour trying to figure out a way to save it and end up burning it anyway and starting over. So just print out a picture of what it is that you're supposed to be carving and that's going to help a lot to make sure that you do it how it needs to be done. Another important tip, especially if you're carving something you've never carved before, and let's say maybe you have a bit of a grainy board or really fine lines like Dad has here, starting shallow and then going back and going deeper is going to help you out a lot. Number one, you're taking out less wood, so it's going to really help you keep a straighter line, and it will help you get finer points if you're feathering in and out the way Dad is. Once he had all of his detail carving done with a carving liner and the shallow stuff with the profile, now he dropped it down to a quarter of an inch and he went in to give himself plenty of room and to take out any areas that maybe he missed as he was carving shallow. Now normally when we do our cleanup, or what we call the cleanup, which is going back in and removing all the excess wood after our profile work is done, we do it with our 90 degree bit. But dad's gonna use the 60 degree to carve the lines and the frame, so he just used that to do the cleanup as well. He did that at 3 16ths of an inch deep. And it works just fine. The only thing you have to worry about is getting a little bit smaller circles for your texture because it doesn't have as wide a cut as the 90. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Why not just use an edge guide to make sure that this frame is straight and make sure those lines are straight? Well, that wouldn't technically be freehand carving. So, Dad actually has a couple little tips to help you get straight lines. If you look right there, Dad's using his finger underneath the base plate to run along the edge of the board, and that really helps him get a straight line. You'll also notice that he's pulling the router towards him as opposed to pushing it away from him. That makes it way easier to keep a straight line. Now we're going to do the spraying and sanding. So we didn't want to get any black inside the, the frame or around that area. And since we're taping that, Dad decided, well, why not just tape everything and kind of save some black and also save some sanding that you have to do. So we used our primer, sprayed it, and then once it dried, which only took like, I don't know, five minutes, if not less, then Dad used the 80 grit disc on the disc sander to get all the black off. Now this took a little longer because we did have two coats of clear to make sure that that didn't smear as we were carving. Now it's time to char this thing. So you guys should have seen dad's face. He almost burst into tears. All that work and I'm just torching it which is kind of my thing. The one thing that the guy on the Dad Build Dad channel, which if you guys get a chance, you gotta go check it out. That dude's hilarious and he makes some really cool stuff. He charred all of his practice pieces like to a crisp to where there was char flaking off and then he, he used a different tool to wire brush, but I didn't have that, so I just used a wire brush. I try to work out on a fairly regular basis, but holy crap, this was tough. I wire brushed the crap out of this thing. And one thing we noticed is that a lot of the grain in the board, some wire brushing came off easier, some didn't. So it really does have to do with the, the grain of the board itself. So you can see the middle is a little bit whiter, the sides are a little bit darker, but I kind of got the basic idea. Then I added a few ounces of water and I think eight drops of liquid food coloring. He used a magic eraser, I think, and I didn't have one of those, so I figured oh, I'll just use a paper towel. Same thing, no problem. It is not the same thing. Don't use a paper towel. It's just, I mean, it, yeah, technically it works, but it didn't come out all that great. And also it left kind of little, little bits of the paper towel all over the place. So I tried it one way and I didn't like it, so I just kept adding more, and it ended up darkening it a little bit, which I really liked. 
Once we let that dry, which took, which took several hours because I put a lot on there, then dad marked a line on the edge of the board and he wanted to power carve this thing down so we could do a different color around the frame. Now, this is kind of difficult. Dad used the cuts all disc to power carve it and then he used a 120 grit disc on the disc sander to get it all smooth and ready for the color. For this process, we used gel food coloring instead of liquid. Now the practice piece I did, it actually came out really cool looking, but there's a few things that I didn't think about. Number one is the practice piece was only like six inches long. I wasn't going around corners and I didn't really take into effect how uneven it would look on a bigger piece. That was a big mistake. The other thing is you can see the different directions that I'm actually moving in and I used a paper towel again, which if I would have used one of those magic erasers or even a rag, it might have looked better. But guys, this just turned out really crappy. I didn't like it at all. It just was nasty looking. So that's a big fat no. I ended up sanding all of this stuff off, which let me tell you guys, this is a pain. But the disc sander really helped us out in this particular instance, because that stuff is sticky. Even after it dried, it just gummed up the sanding disc. It was just altogether a bad idea. It did not work well at all. So I recommend if you're gonna use food coloring, stick with the liquid. So that's what we ended up deciding to do. I did the same thing. I added a few ounces of water, but I actually went with 12 drops of liquid to get it a little bit darker and try to make a little bit more of a contrast between the lighter green and then the darker green. And I finally got smart and I used one of those microfiber towels instead of paper towels and man, it worked way better. So if you don't have one of those magic eraser things, then a microfiber towel actually turns out pretty good. I figured, you know what, let's see if we can make it a little bit darker. And so I added another coat and it actually did darken it up quite a bit. Once that was all done, then we put several coats of clear on it. And to be honest guys, I don't know. Dad says it looks pretty cool. I think it looks okay. I mean, it's a little different. It's kind of unique. Um, and I'm glad we did it because, you know, it's something new, a new process we tried. But I don't know. I'm not a huge fan. Probably won't do it again. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So here is the completed project. Um, I like it. I think it's kind of cool. And we did some things on here that we've never done before. Some things I like. There are some things I'm not crazy about. I think it would have looked better if Ryan hadn't burnt it to a crisp, but uh, that's just the way it is. Most of the things I make, he burns to a crisp. I've learned to live with that. Anyway, um, I think it's kind of cool and it has that kind of dark, uh, scary look to it. So we had fun doing it. We learned a lot. Obviously, we kind of messed up the green on the side, but we had to redo that. And I think it came out much better than the original green that we did. Thanks again for watching, guys. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.